How has it been two months? Anyway, here we are, iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've been using this every day as my main phone, and now the launch hype has died down a little bit. We've had a couple of updates, including mostly fixing that overheating issue that we had at launch. I've also successfully dropped it. As you can see, I've dinged the glass here a little bit, which is just my luck as I was literally switching between cases when I dropped it. Sod's law, I'm telling you, which is definitely why I suggest protection at all times. I suppose the silver lining is that it's like half the price now to replace this glass back than it was on old models, which is great, but still not ideal. And also if you've seen Jerry Rig Everything's video, I would avoid doing this. I've also shot a little wedding video for my friend on this. Nothing too fancy and literally just handheld with the iPhone using cinematic mode and the same for the styled shoots that Mrs. Tech Chat worked on for her wedding floristry business. I've played a solid five minutes of Resident Evil Village, uh, mainly because I've already completed it on PS5, but just to prove that I could, because we've got the A17 Pro chip, I've also taken, I think, over 3,000 photos with this, including doing a full camera comparison with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, and I've also tested it versus the uh, OnePlus Oppo and the Pixel 8 Pro. We've had a, quite a few launches since this came out. Although, to be fair, most of my photos are of Sylvie. So basically, I've been using it quite a bit. Uh, even though I am a basic B word and still use the uh, <laughs> default wallpaper, I just quite like it, even though the dynamic wallpapers are quite nice. So, has this been worth the upgrade? Well, let me answer that over the course of the next 10 minutes. And I wanna start off with story time because I went to the pub the other day with my friend Will, who I haven't seen in a while. He obviously assumes that I always have the latest tech, which I do. Uh, so he was like, oh, is that the new iPhone? I was like, yes, it is, Will. This is the new iPhone 15 Pro Max. Gave it him and he was like, oh, hmm. How is it different from my 13 Pro Max, he said. And I paused, possibly because I had like three or four pints by this point, but I was also considering what are the upgrades with this that would actually mean something to him. He's not particularly techy. I mean, the fact that it has a matte titanium frame now rather than stainless steel. It's a little bit lighter, which actually I do appreciate uh, as someone who's been using the, let me unplug it, the 14 Pro Max uh, for basically the whole year last year. This is definitely, I should probably switch it around because left is always old. Uh, this is definitely a noticeably lighter phone and you do sort of feel it every day you pick it up. So I do appreciate the lightweightness. There's the slightly thinner bezels. We can shoot video in log now, although I doubt he'd know what that is. And then there's the faster chip. We have 24 megapixel photos now rather than 12 and different focal length shortcuts. And the battery life is about the same as his phone. So except for being a little bit lighter and also maybe one or two camera features like their next gen portraits that let you turn a photo into a portrait. I love that and I'll come back to it in a second. The main thing, the first thing I said was, well, it's got USB-C. To which he said, oh, actually, that is quite a big deal. I'm sick of having to carry a separate lightning cable uh, alongside his iPad and his laptop. And it is true that for most people, I reckon this is the main reason you may want to upgrade. I mean, for me, being able to share the same charger as Mrs. Tech Chap's Pixel or to easily plug in a USB drive so I can then shoot the 4K60 ProRes in log and to just not have to faff around with lightning adapters. I recently reviewed the new Xreal AR glasses. These Air 2 Pros are properly amazing, by the way. And with just one USB-C cable from the glasses to my phone, it mirrors the screen to a 130-inch OLED display right in front of your eyes. So life is just easier with USB-C and obviously this will be the new standard going forward for all iPhones as well as obviously every other phone on the planet, which we've had for years now. The only downside for me at least is the uh, MagSafe power pack, the Apple one, which I've been using for a while now. This is still lightning, hasn't been updated and neither has the MagSafe Duo charger that I use by my bedside. So for a minute, I'm still having to carry a lightning cable around with me for some of the peripherals. What I haven't really noticed as much is the action button. This was one of the key features. I mean, you could tell they were kind of clutching at straws when they were hyping the titanium frame and the action button for a launch of a new iPhone, but I can't say I've really used it that much. I think like most people, I immediately changed it to open the camera app, which then obviously doubles as a shutter button, but then the volume down still acts as a shutter button. And most of the time, I just open it that way anyway. Recently, I've actually changed it to do not disturb, effectively turning it back into like the mute toggle switch that we had before. So it's not really been a big deal for me at all. I do appreciate the use cases for some accessibility settings. And if you do use the action button a lot, let me know how you use it. Maybe I can get some tips. Now I mentioned the overheating issue because at launch there were some software issues with iOS where it would kick the processor into high power mode and drain your battery and the phone would get too hot. 
Now, the good news is Apple was pretty quick to send out an update, and right now I'm on 17.1.1, and that did largely address the issue. And it's a chip that's capable of running Resident Evil Village with PS4 level graphics, albeit at 720p 30fps, but it is impressive. Right now, there's still like one game, and maybe a couple more coming, like Resi 4 and Assassin's Creed that are like this. And to be honest, any iPhone from the last two or three years will play any normal game on the App Store pretty much flawlessly. Although I will say, coming from the 14 Pro Max, which of course is already incredibly powerful with the A16 chip, I did notice this was just a little bit more consistently smooth. So while you can't really see the difference just swapping around, going between apps, you know, iPhones have been incredibly fast for years now. Just every now and then when you're doing a bunch of stuff where you've got, you know, apps running in the background on the camera, you just notice fewer issues, I think, with this. Having said that, I still have experienced one or two little bugs every now and then where maybe the screen rotates and gets stuck, or the camera app freezes, or the keyboard doesn't type. Very hard to replicate, so I can't really show it very easily. But on the whole, it's been a pretty slick experience, and much better than it was at launch with last year's 14 series. But whichever phone you pick, make sure you keep it safe. And so I've teamed up with the lovely folks over at Casetify, who are very kindly sponsoring this video, to show you just how safe these cases are. And in fact, they sent me this nice big block of their EcoShock material, and they use it in their protective cases. And just look at how it absorbs the shock of this metal ball landing on it, compared to some competing material. At the molecular level, this plant-based EcoShock material turns the kinetic energy of dropping your phone into heat, while its twister pattern dissipates the energy across the surface of the case, dissipating up to 95% of the impact. You could drop your shiny new iPhone 15 Pro Max in an ultra balanced case, with a screen protector of course, from over 32 feet, and it should be fine. Now I have a selection of the latest Bounce, Ultra Pounce, Impact and Impact Ring Stand cases, all of which have been refreshed for the iPhone 15s, and of course the latest Samsung and Google devices. So they're tough, they look good with tons of customization options, and then check this bad boy out. This is Caseify's Impact Ring Stand case. This little guy just folds out from the back of the camera module here, and you can use it like you have a pop socket. It still gives you over six feet of drop protection. It's made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. And then you can watch your movies or do whatever you like without having to hold your phone. So keep your phone safe and click my link in the description below to get 10% off your next Caseify order and experience the protective power of EcoShock. In terms of battery, over the last couple of months, I've been averaging about nine hours of screen on time, and I find it is lasting just a little bit longer than my 14 Pro Max, and it's roughly on par with the 13 Pro Max. Obviously, it'll all come down to how you use it. Are you gaming? Are you shooting 4K video all day? Are you on 5G or Wi-Fi? That sort of thing. And also, if you are coming from an older iPhone, which I imagine you would be, chances are the battery health on that has gone down quite significantly because uh, one thing I was a bit disappointed by last year, my 14 Pro Max, after 11 months, 11 and a half months, the battery health went down to 88%, which is not ideal. Now, so far, after like eight weeks or so, I'm still on 100% with the 15 Pro Max, which I hope to see. Obviously, we'll have to see how it goes over the next six, 12 months. But I think for me, there were three main reasons this has been worth the upgrade. The USB-C port, the fact that it is noticeably lighter, and I absolutely love the camera. Now, it is not perfect, and I made a camera comparison with the S23 Ultra a few weeks ago, where they kind of trade blows, there are pros and cons for each, and of course, we should also see the S24 series in January, and that will really be its true competition. But right now, for me, I find the 15 Pro Max's camera the most consistent, and also the most visually pleasing, and that goes for both photos and video. And there's a couple of features that really make it stand out. And I think for the average person, not just a tech pro user, will actually make a difference and perhaps will be worth upgrading. And the first one, the main one for me, is the next gen portrait. So if I can tap that, you can see I can turn any regular photo into a portrait and then even change the focal point and the strength of the blur. The iPhone 15s actually capture the depth information when you take a normal photo, and it means I haven't touched the portrait mode in the camera app since my initial review. I just take regular photos, and then every now and then I'll go back into the Photos app and turn it into a portrait. And it means if your kid, or in my case, your cat is doing something funny or cute, you don't have to go between, oh, should I take a photo or a portrait? I like portraits, but it's gonna take longer. Just take a photo every time, and then you can change it later. Aside from that, I appreciate the photos are now 24 megapixels, and there is more detail in shots, even compared to the 14 Pro's camera. And the higher resolution does give me more confidence to shoot at the different focal lengths, including the two times zoom, more than I have before. Now, I have to admit, at the start, I thought the whole changing of the one times focal length was a bit of a gimmick that only maybe a few photographers might want to use. 
but I take that back. I've actually really come to like it and I have set 35 millimeter, the equivalent of 1.5 times zoom as my default lens now, shall we say, which you can change or turn off entirely in the camera settings. I just really like the look of that focal length. And it's funny to see the competition. This is the OnePlus Open, which I actually think is a terrific phone in its own right. You have this default wide angle focal length option. I can't say for sure they just copied and pasted it, but it is peculiar that only a few weeks after the iPhone came out, we also have this option now on the OnePlus. Now the big hardware change with the 15 Pro Max is the jump up to that five times optical zoom from the three times we've been used to and which its smaller brother, the 15 Pro still uses. And it basically means between three and 4.9 times zoom, the 15 Pro is better, but for five times and beyond, the Pro Max is better. And the longer zoom does kind of force you to rethink your shots a little bit. I do like the more compressed look, although for portraits, I always find myself having to take a couple of steps back to get them nicely in frame and not too zoomed in and it can produce some really nice shots. Although while it does have an impressively wide aperture for its range, the sensor still isn't that big. So in lower light, you do see quite a bit of noise. It's also a little bit frustrating considering Samsung gives us four lenses. You don't have to think about, do I want three times with the 15 Pro or five times with the Pro Max? With the S23 Ultra, they give us both the three and the 10 times. So it's annoying that for similar flagship phones, one will give you four lenses, one will give you three. Would be nice to see that on the iPhone, but I doubt we will anytime soon. So the Samsung is still the zoom king, although I do appreciate the much smoother transitions between the lenses on the iPhone and the fact that I can now go between the ultra wide all the way up to the telephoto while recording at 4K 60. Now I just wish I could also pause recording like you can on almost all Android phones. I've also found myself using the cinematic mode a lot more than I have before, and I genuinely love this. I use this all the time. No other phone in my view has a cinematic or portrait video mode as good as the iPhone. And of course, while it won't match a proper shallow depth of field on a full frame mirrorless camera, for something you can carry around in your pocket and also rely on handheld stabilization, I absolutely love it. One of my absolute favorite features though is to be able to shoot in log. And actually when I first made my initial review, I didn't really have a LUT, a uh, lookup table, so you can sort of color it well, but now we've had a few weeks. There are plenty you can download from Apple or third parties. And it just makes a heck of a difference to how natural, how cinematic your videos can look. I'm shooting this at 4K 30. You can shoot up to 4K 60 ProRes in log. And it just means you can get away from that iPhone look, but while still being, you know, hashtag shot on iPhone. And remember all that good stuff, the cinematic mode, ProRes, shooting in log, the next gen portraits also applies to the selfie camera. So overall, I am really happy with the 15 Pro Max, but it's not perfect. The zoom isn't as good at three times, which is annoying. Skin tones can sometimes still be a bit too warm or too orangey, especially for darker skin tones. And we do still get that lens flare. I've also managed to ding the glass and that was pretty easy actually. It fell off onto this wooden floor from like table height. We also can't really utilize the power of that A17 Pro chip. There's just like a couple of games now that are that console level, but of course it does future proof it. I know not many people care, but I still wish there was a split screen mode. I mean, this is a pro phone. We've got a big screen, it's on iPad, so why not? And I'm sure you'd agree, it does just still feel a bit iterative. We haven't had that sort of big exciting moment for an iPhone since I guess the 10, the X. I would love to see a flip or a fold or, you know, a budget, a good budget iPhone, like a replacement of the SE. And the fact that the main features include being USB-C and an action button and the titanium frame suggests that this isn't the most exciting iPhone ever, but it does all add up. And I think being USB-C, a little bit lighter, some of those camera features, including the next gen portraits, this is definitely a worthy upgrade, I would say, if you have maybe an iPhone 12 or earlier. But what do you think? Do you own an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max? And if so, let me know what you make of it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.